Hello and welcome to this special broadcast of The Wire. I'm Mitali Mukherjee. I'm going to be joined in a little bit by M.P. Denu, founding editor of The Wire. It is an extremely difficult morning for financial markets um, and will be through the course of the day, I imagine. Of course, not, that is not the biggest part of the problem. As most of you may have read and seen in the news, we have disturbing global developments. Russia has, it is confirmed, entered Ukrainian territory. They have invaded Ukraine, in fact, the latest reports seem to suggest that Russian troops as well have entered into Ukrainian territory. It's had um, it's had a negative ripple down effect. Financial markets have been struggling. India itself is bleeding quite hard. The Sensex and Nifty are down almost three to four percent. The bigger problem is what's happening with some of the larger commodities. Crude, for example, has crossed that hundred dollar mark. Uh, commodities like aluminum are surging past lifetime highs. And of course, there's been collateral damage on the Indian rupee. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, Venu and I are going to chat about what this means for the stock market. More importantly, we're going to unpack what this means for India's economy and its economic choices going ahead because things have clearly turned turtle in the course of the last few months. If you have any questions, we encourage you to write in and we'll try and take that up as well. Venu, hi. Um, to an extent, though, especially with some of what's happening on commodities, can't say that we didn't see it coming, right? Yeah, in the sense, uh, uh, Mitali, we saw it coming. Uh, everybody, all, any analyst worth his salt in the world, his or her salt in the world, uh, was talking about, uh, you know, the, the mega commodity price uh, impact uh, uh, you know, the energy and commodity price increases uh, and uh, and their impact on the economies. Uh, but for some strange reason, uh, Mitali, our own uh, government and RBI particularly uh, yeah. have been uh, pretty sanguine about uh, the, the ripple effect that may come on to India. Uh, although we've had, a, we, I mean, we've had a wholesale price index at double digits for months together, you know. Uh, yeah. More than eight nine months, and uh, and and a fairly elevated uh, uh, consumer price index, uh, way above the RBI's uh, or close to the R barely yeah. within the RBI's comfort zone. Uh, but yeah. uh, RBI, R RBI's last policy uh, was pretty sanguine, and uh, what surprised me most was the deputy governor and the governor both suggesting that that there are different. Uh, Global inflation will impact India differently from from other countries, uh, mm. and and the R RBI deputy governor cited two or three examples. Uh, food food inflation, he said, won't affect India as much as uh, it would affect uh, maybe the Western countries. Uh, and and then he argued that the U.S. inflation is determined by uh, very uh, very exclusive factors like secondhand car prices there in, in the U.S. Uh, going up, which which doesn't really affect India. But uh, but he he left out commodities and uh, in his analysis uh, uh, commodities and energy. Uh, I heard Michael Patra very very closely uh, when the when, during the press conference that governor had with the media, and when the governor tossed this question to Michael Patra, uh, somebody asked, "What about imported inflation? Uh, the the risk of?" Patra spoke about these other factors which wouldn't affect India, but he, he didn't touch upon energy and commodities for some strange reason. And now we see Mitali oil above $100. Uh, yeah. as, as, we, uh, as Ukraine is invaded, uh, by, by invasion is still on, uh, uh, we see, uh, I just saw 25% increase in energy prices, uh, gas prices in Europe, and 15% increase uh, in gas prices. Uh, uh, this is the immediate impact, uh, power, yeah. power prices in Europe. Now, if, if the RBI still says that 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 India uh, will not get affected by by global energy and commodity prices, I think uh, it's it's being uh, it's, it's it's acting like uh, the ostrich with, with its head in the sand, you know. Yeah, and it probably has had its head in the sand for a while, Venu. I mean, this in sticky inflation is not a new phenomenon, frankly. What is yeah. probably happening is that. Um, you know, that process of kicking the can down the road is now coming to a point where you can't do it anymore. For example, yeah. for the last months, petrol prices have been uh, on hold, right? So come the 8th of March, we're looking at, I, I would imagine, between a 10 to 12 rupee hike straight away on petrol and, and diesel. They're also going to have to take yeah. that decisions 
excise duty collections uh, you, you know this is um in a sense you know venu you and i have seen a lot of financial cycles and now we're looping all the way back to 2014 when we had just stepped in from high crude prices which were beginning to lower and the government has reaped yeah. the benefits of that over the last few years now what right yeah yeah in the sense uh, uh, mitali this this was also staring at us every other analyst had been pointing out that the last price revision by the government domestic uh, uh, petrol diesel price revision was done on november the 4th and yeah. it was when Uh, the oil prices were uh, the crude prices were seventy five dollars, and now they have touched hundred dollars. Once UP election gets over, this this additional twenty five dollars increase in the price since November the fourth, which has not been uh, corrected, uh, in spite of the so called monthly market correction policy that the government swears by. Uh, uh, now what will happen? Uh, this twenty five dollar increase in crude will either have to be. Uh, <laughs> De- dealt with the by, by either increasing the domestic price or by cutting taxes now they can't yeah. cut taxes if they cut taxes uh, their their uh, the fisc- all the fiscal assumptions uh, will get impacted right so mm. so one really doesn't know uh, we are in very very uh, very very dicey uncharted uh, terrain you know so let us see what happens there yeah. you know when you were talking about how it was quite surprising and it was the the sort of note and tone and tenor of the reserve bank governor but then a couple of weeks before that the, the note and tone and tenor of the finance minister in her budget was equally um dissociated from reality first of all there was no acceptance yeah. or affirmation of the fact that we had a surging unemployment crisis and a poverty problem yeah. for one section of yeah. india as as you're pointing out you know we've got inflation on our hands we we are not going to hit those deficit targets that she set out because the, you know eyebrows were raised even when she set them at that point and uh, also yeah. what happens to any plans of disinvestment i mean forget about bpcl but even for I, lic in yeah. this environment true so 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 mitali you're right you know the uh, you're right actually there was no uh, mitali if you remember there was no analysis in the budget either of of the impact that imported inflation may have on india's economy in fact the, yeah. the approach has throughout been uh, as we discussed earlier you know head buried in the sand uh, that india doesn't india is managing its inflation very well so much so uh, so much so mitali that that i was i was astonished that the prime minister in his reply to the president's address in parliament was mocking nehru saying that that Nehru, when he could not control inflation, he used to blame the Korean War in the 1950s. Uh, obviously, Nehru at that time, any any war, uh, any global uh, serious global uh, con- military conflict, uh, which we, which can threaten to engulf the rest of the world, uh, uh, suck in the rest of the world into that conflict, will create disruption in energy prices. Will create uh, oil supply disruption. and uh, it must have happened in in the korean war also right in korea china got sucked in us was there you know uh, the entire asian uh, you know uh, uh, economies were also uh, uh, very very kind of shaky though, uh, at that time uh, so so modi was uh, the prime minister was mocking nehru and only ye- uh, yesterday i saw mitali pm was speaking at uh, at up election uh, i think uh, now or somewhere Uh, day before and he mentioned ukraine he said duniya mein uthal puthal ho rahi hai and this is the time for tough leaders now i want to see what sort of toughness uh, uh, mr modi uh, shows in the face of uh, uh, what we are seeing in ukraine and uh, what might happen if oil stays above 100 dollars a barrel and if there there's further disruption uh, now us is now just uh, has not yet announced the tougher sanctions so far only uh, uk european union has the uh, european union has announced a, a postponement or a cancel, uh, temporary suspension of of the big uh, pipeline project from russia to germany uh, sorry germany has announced uh, so from russia to germany uh, uh, now that's a future project that does not disrupt uh, existing oil supplies now if tougher sanctions are imposed on the russian banks on on russian uh, uh, businesses then uh, i don't know what impact it might have on uh, uh, russia's energy exports to europe uh, europe depends uh, uh, to the tune of 33% on 
on Russian uh, gas, right? So, so these are all imponderables, and uh, uh, we'll have to uh, see how uh, further sanctions on uh, on on the Russian economy. Uh, you know, some of the big Russian banks have been sanctioned by UK. Uh, some of the Russian oligarchs are being sa- sanctioned. Uh, so, uh, what will be the cumulative effect of all this? Uh, will be seen. And and Mitali, I would also like to add here. Uh, the government today announced on its own, it said that the Ukraine, uh, the fresh Russian invasion uh, in Ukraine will not impact the LIC IPO. Now, I find it interesting that the government fa- found the need to clarify this. Uh, it is very clear that, that financial markets uh, turmoil will impact not only our uh, uh, disinvestment program, it will also impact yeah. Mitali, our ambitious program of raising uh, roughly, in my calculation, it's it's about uh, 20 lakh crore a year for to drive infrastructure projects, national infrastructure pipeline, and and and, and a good part of this is is to come from uh, from abroad. So India could need anywhere between 80 to 90 or 100 billion dollars uh, uh, from abroad to fund uh, infrastructure development of such a large scale, and part of it is also monetization of uh, uh, existing infrastructure where, where also the uh, the government hopes to invite foreign uh, uh, you know funds to participate in the in the lease arrangement right F- foreign institutions yeah. now yeah. how much of that uh, how much of that will get disrupted uh, one doesn't know so so generally from the from the standpoint of energy prices and from the standpoint of of uh, uh, financial uh, markets uh, abroad and india's ability to raise money uh, or any emerging markets ability. It's, this is not just to do with India. Uh, you know, if, if in such a situation, uh, we've seen in the past, history tells us, Vitali, that 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 uh, global investors will uh, uh, will 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 move uh, to safe havens like the U.S. Uh, uh, Treasury bonds. Uh, in fact, I, uh, I I spoke to a former RBI governor, very well respected RBI governor, yesterday, and he confirmed to me that uh, the first instinct. Of global investors will be flight to safety U.S. bonds. Now th- that could lead to uh, other consequences. You know, it could lead to U.S. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, interest rates uh, could could become volatile, and you know, the uh, overall financial markets could become uh, you know, funds flow to the emerging markets could get affected. So that is yeah. my just, uh, worry. Uh, yeah. You know, on your point about foreign funds, though, I just want to make a point here, which is that this uh, disenchantment with India is not, you know, only courtesy of war in Ukraine. I mean, if you look at the foreign funds last year, it was our poorest, poorest pulling at the stock market since 20, 2015 or 2018, I think. Again, this year, yeah, till yeah. as of yesterday. We've seen FIIs pull out, pull out close to sixty thousand crores from this market. So you know, uh, you know, who are we yeah. kidding when we're talking about the fact that there is enough liquidity to absorb something as massive as LIC? I think there is genuinely a question mark, not just because of Ukraine, but there is a, a mood switch that's happened. Uh, you know, in the stock market specifically, Venu. Also, the fact that now you've got yeah. the rupee ticking at you know, the last I checked seventy five thirty six. That's not a comfortable place to be. And the second, Venu, you, you know, this point about for many months now, for the government, uh, they've chosen to look at one part of uh, the economy and not the other part. So, you know, corporate India, for example, has not done badly in the last few quarters. Yeah. Uh, segments which have been showing economic recovery. But I'm wondering, with a hit like this and commodity impact like this on metals, on energy, do, can we still remain sanguine that there's one part of the engine that's pulling? Because uh, now that, that comes up for question as well, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you because FIIs, uh, Vitali, you, you, right, you can separate FIIs uh, from FDI. Now, the hope that the, the government had uh, and its assumption in the budget was that that big, they, they would be much bigger FDI flows uh, uh, into, into India uh, via whatever, infrastructure and, you know, uh, if, if they offer good returns to foreign investors on in, in the, infra- in the infra- infrastructure space uh, or if they if they sell good public sector companies, uh, so that would qualify as FDI, right? So, yeah. uh, but but you're, you're right. They've not been able to sell BPCL. We are waiting for a year and a more than, year and more. Uh, they've not been able to sell container corporation. They've not been able to sell shipping corporation. Uh, in fact, my surprise is that they they managed to sell uh, loss making Air India, but that's because of Tata. So 
So no, so in that sense, um, they're uh, also we don't know what put, the transfer uh, has been, right? No, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah exactly. So you, you, yeah, you can put that in a different uh, bucket. Uh, yeah. But overall, you're right. Uh, there, there is an FII. Uh, in fact, I very interesting data which I was speaking to Samir Arora uh, uh, yesterday on the phone in Singapore. He told me, Mithali, that uh, that in the last three months, since uh, November, December, January, uh, over $11 billion net FIIs have taken away. And he told me that that the same amount was taken out, around the same amount was taken out by the FIIs in 2020 between, say, in the month of Feb, March, and April. Because uh, that's when the, the that corona had already... Uh, uh, you know, China had been uh, already been infected. Uh, uh, COVID had already hit China, and uh, subsequently other emerging markets got affected. Uh, uh, the stock markets uh, because of COVID, February, March, April, uh, and a lot of money went out of the emerging markets. If you remember, uh, even then, and uh, in yeah. that period, also only about 11, 12 billion dollars ha- had gone out of India, but the markets fell much more at that time uh, than this time because. Markets fell by, I think, 25-30%, uh, more because uh, domestic participants were not there. Subsequently, in the last two years, we've seen a lot of domestic participants. Now, how long will these domestic mm-hmm. participants uh, kind of, you know, uh, hold on and, and really sort of provide the defenses uh, yeah. is, is something uh, to, to be seen, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I mean, even over there, you know, uh, like the, the frontline indices have not lost that much, agreed. But if you look at the mid cap and the small yeah. cap space, stocks that have lost between yeah. 30 to 50 percent, you know. So a lot of people who yeah. came in with trading gusto have got wiped out. <clears throat> Secondly, on that point about the LIC IPO, just look at what's happened to the IPOs. You know, it's a graveyard. I mean, one in three of the IPOs that listed yeah. in, the, in this financial year are uh, trading with losses. Especially the really yeah, yeah. big ones, you know, including Paytm. Et the unicorns, yeah. The u- unicorns yeah. have really been hit very hard. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I actually yeah. have a bone to pick with the regulator as well. I mean, you know, what is going on over here when unicorns are being welcomed into the stock market? Do we have a mandate, mandated set of uh, rules of the game or not? What are the anchor investors doing? What happens after their lock-in ends? I think just like the RBI, SEBI needs to do some soul-searching as well. But uh, perhaps yeah, yeah. the most soul-searching venue has to be done by the finance minister, right? I mean, it's a rock and a hard place now. Does she really hit out with petrol uh, and diesel price increases? Or does she start slicing down on excise duties, which frankly is what had her uh, tax revenues coasting last year? And she's got a deficit mm-hmm. to look at, fertilizer subsidies. Uh, this, is, this is not a, a happy place to be for um, a finance minister, is it? Absolutely. In fact, Mithali, I, I, I must say that from here on, the general mm-hmm. elections are barely uh, two years away, right? So mm-hmm. you have, this government has barely one full budget to pre- present next year. I think the one that, that happens in uh, 20, uh, you know, uh, 24 will be, uh, will be, will not be a full budget, right? So, yeah. so, so, so what happens from here on, if this $100 plus persist for the next, say, six, seven months. I, I'm just assuming, you know, that the diplomacy in Ukraine has now taken a backseat. Uh, yeah. Putin has decided to really test the NATO uh, alliance, you know, and test the US. And Putin has, it, it seems very clear that he's just uh, bent upon now showing the weakness of the United States. And he's yeah. he's just, he's just provoking the US now by, by, by the, 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 by, the current invasion you know, of the larger eastern uh, Ukraine region. Earlier, yeah. earlier, it just moved into those two breakaway, uh, you know, uh, uh, regions uh, where the Russians were already present, right? Russian uh, uh, covertly were present and now they went in overtly. After which, uh, the Americans said, if they do anything more, we will come up with hard sanctions. So, after that, he he's further moved into the eastern U- uh, Ukraine area. So, now... Uh, now, I don't know what the U.S. will uh, retaliate. Now, all this is will lead to what, Mithali? It will lead to uncertainty in oil prices. I think oil price will stay above maybe $100 for even if it, it is for three, four months until this is resolved. Diplomacy doesn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, is not uh, resorted to by these uh, biggies, by these big powers. And they keep 
they keep sort of staring uh, you know eyeball to eyeball for for the next 3 4 months the oil price will be high and uh, and that's where all our budget assumptions will go and i don't think narendra modi prime minister modi will have the courage from here on to further raise prices uh, uh, of petrol and diesel if it is raised maybe they'll raise it to it's already near 100 imagine if it uh, if, if they have to correct prices uh, uh, say to 120 dollars if crude goes to say 105 110 uh, i don't think they can raise domestic prices to 115 120 130 uh, it's out of the question in my view i think the poor have already suffered the poor have suffered huge uh, income losses and this affects the poor much more than the rich right so yeah. you know a, you know a motorcycle a motorcycle owner poor chap pays the same price as an suv owner for for diesel or whatever for petrol you know so i think this strategy will not work so so yeah. it's a uh, as you said in the beginning a uh, uh, rock and a hard place uh, or you can call it between the devil and the deep sea you know so let let's yeah. see how this pans out yeah in fact for anyone watching uh, you know just on the indian market perspective it's been quite bad we're probably right on top in terms of uh, markets that are suffering second perhaps to the hang seng but we've already lost about 1900 points the dow futures is already pointing to an open that's down about 700 points so there is clearly stress in the system and the currency as you know has been bleeding quite a bit you know you know one is the one is the larger picture and one as you you know kind of touched upon is the very very nuclear picture of what's going on inside a household you were talking about motorcycles uh-huh. i think the kind of trend we've seen on two wheeler sales has been an open indication of how much stress there is you know two wheeler sales are not picking yeah. up uh, jobs are not negative. picking up yeah in fact, in fact, in fact mitali I, i want to add here i i heard the yeah. hindustan liver uh, uh, chairman cmd the other day and he says he says uh, you know consumer goods uh, you know non discretionary consumer goods which hindustan liver Uh, uh, dominates in the rural in rural India. He says volume wise negative growth. I, yes. I I I couldn't believe it when he said negative volume growth, and he was expressing serious worry. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and all this is happening. All this is happening because uh, because Mithali the 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 wage you know rural uh, uh, wage growth is is in real terms is zero. Is zero in the last uh, you know uh, uh, one year two years. You know? yeah because uh, because even though we talk about narega it's it's ultimately base level right you know it's not it's not a solution yeah. it's a safety yeah. net i mean it's yeah. really, we have to differentiate the two and i think the lever chairman yeah. as you said was also the first one to flag how inflation is really hitting companies and people but what yeah. i wanted to ask you when when this pain becomes so personal for every household i was talking to a former finance secretary who was making the point that for the previous government this was really a bit of a turning point you know with crude hitting uh, triple digits the the pain people were feeling in terms of inflation and cost push uh, up until now yeah. uh, economics has not been center stage for political discussions uh, now you hear about in up mehngai is an issue berozgari is an issue yeah, yeah. in this run up from now to 2024 will will these start to become more pivotal issues you think I think uh, Vitali, uh, it's a very important point that you have raised, and I'll tell you, I was in Western UP, and it, it was heartening for me to see for the first time that leaders from public platforms were saying, "Please focus on your issues of income, jobs, and you know, farmer incomes, and un- unemployment, inflation, and 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 forget about polarizing." issues like you know hindu muslim uh, tension etc and and i saw the crowd responding uh, likewise crowd was saying yes this is our uh, the real issues are livelihood issues and and they said is bari hindu musliman ko mudde ko you western up mein aane nahi denge and and there is unanimity among uh, among media people neutral people also uh, even bjp supporters say that to a large extent in western up economic issues have now come to the fore and this is worrying the bjp uh, and that's why they they are constantly shifting the goal posts uh, if you remember adityanath in the middle when when hindu muslim uh, you know division was not working he started scaring uh, up voters saying that you may become like kerala or or west bengal which also i think he failed uh, i mean he failed to communicate what he wanted to 
later he said, oh, I was only referring to violence. Uh, there might be violence in Kerala. Uh, he's suggesting that Kerala has more violence than UP. I don't know which world he's living in. So, uh, so, so you're right. Economic issues are coming to the fore. And, uh, and this we can see... E- this we can see even in eastern up the many leaders who uh, backward leaders who have quit bjp uh, mitali they are openly saying that our issues of empowerment ha- have not been addressed by the bjp and they are saying that merely giving you know giving uh, uh, free food uh, or putting some money in the in our bank accounts is it, it may be social welfare it's not empowerment uh, they mm-hmm. they want a proper economic empowerment in terms of you know sustainable jobs etc etc and, and reservation in public security this is exactly what Swami Prasad Maurya you know and uh, uh, DS Chauhan the two big leaders who left BJP some uh, time ago uh, have been saying and uh, this is this is part of the now political discourse in the in various public meetings where are the jobs you know and they're also saying that if you if all public sector assets uh, if they are, uh, you know, prime assets, if they are leased out to uh, 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 in an asset monetization program to the outside world, private sector, then what happens to the jobs that these uh, these public sector companies reserve for uh, for the backwards and the, you know the the uh, backward, backward classes, you know? So, so some of these questions have become uh, very very uh, uh, very current and very potent. Mithali, I'm, I'm I'm I was surprised to. Uh, see people at the grassroots level talking about what happens to our, our, our reserved jobs in public sector outfits like you know like gas authority of railways uh, you know NHAI you know airports etc etc which the yeah. government proposes to lease le- lease out here yeah. actually we didn't even hear anything about that you know uh, NMP didn't come up in the speech either this was a whole new infrastructure push and dream just one final question yeah. you know uh, the, the the problem also with I think some of the some of the dialogue from the finance minister and the RBI, you know, is to not even admit that there is a problem. At this point, what should the number one imperative for the finance minister, perhaps in conjunction with the Reserve Bank, be? You know, like what is the communication we need to send out at this point? Well, at this point, uh, uh, one communication should definitely be, Mitali, to to conserve our resources. You know, we have to. Uh, petrol on the seventh I mean, of have... March. Huh? Yeah. Still petrol on the seventh yeah. of March. Yeah, yeah. In the sense, uh, see, to to begin with, Mitali, they should start communicating to the people uh, the re- the real situation. You know, you can't. Yeah. How, how long can you can you not tell uh, uh, keep people? Uh, of course, the educated ones or the mid- middle class knows. I would I, I would assume even the rural folk know that petrol prices uh, are heading up, and there's no other way uh, other than further increase after UP election. Now this this everybody knows. Now yeah. now this government will have to seriously think about. Uh, in my view, they'll have to scale down their infrastructure uh, uh, driven, uh, which is the centerpiece of the budget program. Uh, they'll have to sort of s- scale down on all those uh, and they have to scale down on, uh, on, on their asset monetization program because the financial market conditions are not, uh, uh, you know, not very conducive outside. Uh, by the way, that asset monetization program, they don't mention it, but in their explanatory note, they say that infrastructure funding, uh, asset monetization is part of this. You know that six lakh crore, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over five yeah. years. So, so they, so they will have to review. Uh, they will have to review that disinvestment program, uh, given these conditions, right? So, and they will have to now go back to the drawing board and see how, uh, you know, basic needs of the people can be met uh, without uh, within the given resources. That is my view. I think next next six months to a year. They have to focus on basic needs of the people. I don't think, I don't think that that the big uh, the plan to uh, fund infrastructure uh, at the uh, on the scale that they are talking about, uh, with the kind of fiscal space that they have, uh, they they think they have. I don't think that they have that fiscal space. Like as you and yeah. I discussed, 
there. At, at some point, they'll have to start cutting taxes and not raise petrol diesel prices. And, yeah. pe- and you know, uh, oil. Uh, about, yeah. Because we've got about five uh, minutes, I think there's some questions. So if we can quickly take those, that'll be good. Someone asking, and this yeah. is important. Uh, can you highlight why edible oil price hikes have happened? As we don't import any kind of edible oil from these countries, but I think again, Venu, this is. Something that has really pinched rural households, you know, that uh, mitti ka yeah. tel and sarsa ka tel, the kind of cost push they have seen on that one bottle of cooking oil. But, but we, uh, Mithali, we do import a lot of palm oil from abroad. So that is one of the reasons. In fact, recently the government cut duties on palm oil uh, and, and uh, other edible oil. In fact, the India's edible oil consumption, uh, a good pa- part of edible oil consumption is actually imported. In fact, that is one reason why in India in the last uh, few years, uh, the government has been trying to increase uh, uh, local edible oil uh, plantation, you know, uh, uh, like palm oil plantation, etc., which is environmentally, of course, which, which, which would be a disaster. But that aside, but the, the policy wise, they have been thinking, talking about increasing edible oil, uh, uh, you know, local uh, uh, cultivation, which used to be the case. 25, 30 years ago, but because of cheaper edible oil imports from Malaysia, etc., Indonesia, you know, palm oil particularly, uh, mm. we started uh, over the years reducing our edible oil uh, production. I think there is a talk of raising it, but I don't know. In the uh, it has, uh, it is still, it, it is still in the works. It has not happened. So edible oil, we are get, we do get affected by imports. Um, some in substance, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and things are actually getting pretty worse for the Indian stock market, by the way, for any of you trading or yeah. investing in gas, it's almost 2000 points down, you know, this is also a function of how hard we ran through all of last year. Someone has written saying, yeah. oil or both price. I think that's it's not a question mark, it's a full stop. It's happening and it's not just happening with gold, it's happening with commodities like aluminum and copper and uh, uh, nickel as well. Yeah. That's the other thing, you know, when we haven't, oh, sorry, then there's one more question. Maybe we can take that in the end. If petroleum prices rise, then will it also affect the Indian market on a day to day basis? You know, you want to take, yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah, Mithali. On, uh, yeah, on the, uh, you know, on the, uh, on the stock markets, Mithali, Hmm. you have so many, you have spent so many years watching and uh, uh, doing commentary on the stock market uh, in your earlier avatar. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed one thing? A lot of individuals in the last two years, post COVID, uh, and there are there are date there's data on number of DMAT, new DMAT accounts is doubled yeah. and all. You know, uh, people are entering the market uh, as if uh, as if it's uh, it is some you know there's some gold rush going on, and people are investing in stocks. they uh, the younger people particularly, uh, and they I think they've all suffered uh, very badly uh, in the in the recent fall. And I noticed that even even Mitali good stocks, they are yeah. correcting three for three percent, four percent, and all in one day. I mean, yeah. uh, so I think uh, good stock. When I say good stock, I'm I talk about large uh, large caps. You know, uh, yeah. they, 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 I, I don't want to name them, but there are so many of them. They are correcting like uh, you know very stable stocks are correcting three percent, four percent a day. So I think individuals are well are really advised. Uh, to go through mutual funds, uh, you know, fixed income or whatever, uh, gold, and not in, you know, invest directly in stocks, because they will see their savings getting wiped out, you know, at this rate. I mean, somebody who invested in, for instance, like even like Paytm, IPO, or Zomato, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. they they would be uh, they they would be uh, you know sleepless yeah these days, right? <laughs> They'd be having yeah. nightmares, uh, you know. Uh, so, you know, they would. Be, and, and I think to. In- uh, I think to an extent, this is, uh, you know, as they say in Hindi, Tali ek se nahi bachti hai. Uh, there were enough people know, warning yeah. uh, the valuations of these IPOs. It was completely ridiculous. People were taking advantage yeah, of a situation. Yeah. But you're right. If you see something like the IT index, for example, it's actually fallen the sharpest. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, yeah, you know, the blue yeah. chip. Tip. So I think now people are just basically saying, let me get what I can out of this because I can't, uh, you know, I can't read or see where this is going. Uh, maybe we should end with one I, funny I, 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 question. I, I, yeah. You know, the, 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 the other one I couldn't, uh, 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 I forgot what is the question, the other question on oil prices. 
you said there is a second one on oil prices right yeah, i think he asked whether there would be a daily sort of impact on stock markets because of oil prices i you know i don't think it's a one to one correlation but it's never a good correlation yeah. and then one final question yeah, yeah. on whether the rupee may now behave irrationally irrationally is her question see my sense is that uh, you know there is one advantage that india has today uh, rupee exchange rate is a function of essentially a function of inflation differential right uh, this is what economics uh, teaches mm -hmm. us so as of today us india and us uh, india has a better uh, probably uh, uh, if you look at consumer prices us is 7 7.5 <laughs> you know uh, so us inflation rate is quite high so going by inflation differential the uh, rupee actually should should not uh, depreciate so much this is conventional economics but then our rupee does not work on differential our rupee uh, behaves on capital flows much more than uh, inflation differential so so if if there is a if, if the fii's withdraw much more uh, than they are doing now or if they withdraw uh, consistently keep withdrawing and if domestic investors do not replenish uh, by buying stocks to the extent that the fii's are withdrawing which has happened so far therefore the markets are down about i think year to date about maybe 4% or something uh, 4-5% so that may not uh, if if the domestic guys don't supplement uh, what the foreigners are withdrawing then the markets will again go down and uh, and, uh, and 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 as uh, as dollars uh, as, as dollars move to safe haven like us uh, to that extent uh, rupee will get affected rupee will uh, will will decline Uh, although we have forex reserves of over 600 billion dollars but uh, there is only a limited amount uh, within that that the government can use uh, to to prevent the rupee from uh, falling precipitously maybe they can those monies can be used to to make the rupee decline in an orderly fashion but decline definitely it will be it will yeah hmm. uh, one final question because I don't want to not take on any questions, uh, Venu. There's a final one thing. If Russia is removed from SWIFT, how will that impact India's transactions with Russia? Which, in any case, is in a bit of a sticky spot now, considering our relations with China, Pakistan, and now where we go with Russia, right? So, Mitali, on this, you know, uh, on this, we'll have to wait to see uh, what are the sanctions that the US will. impose in the next uh, 48 72 hours uh, because we have not seen the the us had said that they would impose heavy uh, sanctions if uh, if if the if russia further uh, you know increases its uh, invades uh, east ukraine beyond those two ter uh, break, uh, territories breakaway territories now yeah now i, I we are allowed to wait and see what all uh, this thing uh, sanctions russia imposes and uh, and based on that how will india respond uh, immediately vis-a-vis -vis india and russia i think there is not much uh, russia is not one of india's large trade partners our, our largest trade partners are actually china us european union etc uh, so so on a one to one basis not much but on a broader basis uh, there there could be issues uh, again as i said if if russian gas oil if they are not able to sell as much as they did earlier then the question will be who will replenish the, the, the you know gas and oil to that extent i am told that the us is ramping up its shale production because at these prices shale has become very uh, reasonably attractive so that you know they are ramping up shale at the cost of environment uh, so let us see how much shale gets uh, you know ramped up uh, so all these factors will will actually determine uh, uh, imported inflation into india Uh, otherwise directly vis-a-vis -vis russia I, i don't think we have much to worry about uh. okay that's the time we have uh, i hope this has helped unpack some of what's going on today across financial markets and for the economy for you keep writing in we'll try and take on more questions and try and do some more stuff around this but for now from venu and myself thanks for watching goodbye thank you